Hi, thank you so much for being here. I am Magnolia and this is my floss tube channel which is all about cross stitch. A special welcome to my wonderful subscribers and welcome also to everyone who is new here today. Thank you for joining us. I hope you'll consider sticking around. Today I'll be sharing with you eight whips including five new starts, a finish, stitchy plans and haul and then we'll finish up in the reading nook and multi-crafting corner. If you're new here, welcome. <laughs> I've been cross stitching for over 30 years. Um, I like to say I'm stitching from the cradle to the grave and I love sharing my stitching with and learning from this community. I'm sure many of you will um, identify with the the story of you know sharing stitching throughout your life with family and friends who care about you but don't care so much about the stitching <laughs> so it's really amazing to have found a community of people who are just as passionate about it as I am and to be able to share my love of it with you uh, you can also find me on Instagram as the traveling stitcher and I'm here both on floss tube and Etsy as Magnolia Nest Designs I hope you'll enjoy this video and consider subscribing and today is Sunday the 10th of March 2024. It's been over a month and a half since my last video um, because my home's been running on generator power for most of that time so it's just been too loud to film um, but that does mean I have a lot to share with you today. So let's jump straight into whips shall we? January and February had a winter theme but I did stitch on Shores of Hawkrun Hollow which you can see here um, because I'm hoping to finish this this year which is going to be a tall order because it's a bap but we'll see what we can do um so this was designed by kathy barrack as caratau sampling and i'll pop a picture of how it's meant to look um if you have seen me stitching it before you'll know that i'm modifying it heavily to be a memorial piece uh, for the men in my family who were lost at sea and i say men not because i'm excluding any other gender but because uh, fortunately um, to my knowledge <laughs> and I do have to have that caveat because I am a genealogist and there's always the chance I'll find someone new um, but to my knowledge no woman in my family have been lost at sea there was one who died at sea um, on a boat between England and Canada back in the 1800s and um, was buried at sea um, but um, it's a little bit different so I haven't charted her onto this that might change <laughs> we'll see watch this face anyway um I've been inspired to keep stitching on this by seeing so many other stitches working on it um people I've seen working on it recently include quirks and stitches Georgia Girl Stitching, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, and Socks for Mum, and there's so many more. Um, I love seeing everyone's different takes on it and the way it's being uh, adapted or floss choices. Everyone's looks unique to them, and I absolutely love that. Um, so I'll pop up here a quick before. The last time I shared this, I just finished my first block, which was this one here, uh, which was a, an amalgam of two separate blocks that were squished together, and I added this text myself. Um, and this month and a bit I have been working on this block here I had the border before but I hadn't filled it in at all so this is the big blue house I'm super excited about it now on this uh, this piece I'm stitching on 18 count vintage country mocha um, I started doing two over one which you can see here and I am a uh, completely cover the grid girly. I don't like seeing the fabric through my stitches. I want full, 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 full coverage. And two over one on 18 count gives me that. But I tried one over one for the first time uh, while working on this, on 18 count that is, and absolutely loved it. It was so fun, it was so easy, my stitches laid flawlessly with no effort whatsoever um, and so I I didn't want to go back to two over one so in this block here um, which I've started I've got Sergeant Raymond going who was uh, one of my relatives who was lost at sea during the second world war where he was a uh, airplane pilot 
I used one over one for the background behind that boat and I feel like it really makes it pop. You can see the fabric through it, but because it's not like white and a dark color, like they're both kind of tone on tone, um, I feel like it's beautiful and that doesn't bother me at all to my surprise. So now I'm in this conundrum, what do I do? <laughs> and so this one, all the stitching you see in here, except for um, the flowers and leaves and the fence, everything else is one strand. And those items I just pointed out are two strands. And I'm going to do this one being a mix of one and two strands, which will give it some nice dimension, make things pop out. And I haven't decided, and I guess that's okay, I've got some time, but I haven't decided for the next box. Am I going to do uh, one strand and am I going to use two? I was thinking last night, so this block here is entirely two strands. This one's a mixture of one and two, as is this one. I could have that be like a fade, so two strands, two and one, and then just one for the rest and just run with it that way. And maybe that would still look good and make sense visually. I don't know. I haven't decided. I guess it's good that I've got some some time as I stitch my way through this to decide. But if you have any views or experience with, um, you know, mixing <laughs> or changing your mind part way through a project, please let me know. I'd really love to hear from you. Next up is Winter Comes by Heartstring Samplery, and I'll put here a picture of how it's meant to look when it's finished. Uh, there is no before picture for this because this was a new start, um, and you can see it's got a little bit of um, like dust on it, which bothers me. Um, when I ironed this, I forgot to clean the iron first, and the iron was dusty. <laughs> So I'm just going to keep cleaning the dust off as I go. Um, this was the piece that I shared in my last video where I did the Cross Stitch Academy tutorial on how I use the marking lines. It's like a basting line around the edge. Now this is just to guide my stitching and will be removed. But what I can say, so I've done a large portion of this border now. Um, and I've had no problems. It's gone in really quickly, really easily because I'm counting from these markers and so these little ones out are at every tenth stitch and I've counted, recounted, I've checked from side to side to make sure there are no errors in that. The counting on the piece itself was so fast and so easy and it was just an absolute joy. I don't always love the counting aspect of counted cross stitch. I don't hate it or I wouldn't enjoy this craft but I just want to stitch and I don't always want to be counting and recounting and you know again and again and again. So having the these marker lines for me which give me confidence that my border will be correct and will meet up um, and I don't have to count as far out it just it makes it a much more enjoyable process for me now, I'm really sorry this isn't very my camera's not being very kind to me today with focusing um, but I'm really happy really happy with how this has come together. I focused on winter in January and February and I used maybe two skeins, <laughs> I think two complete skeins of DMC Blanc and um, I loved it. I actually, I really enjoy big block stitching. It's a nice break for me because um, I've mostly been a super high confetti full coverage stitcher um, and so it's nice to just thread up my needle with one color and, and run for it and not have to make lots of changes. I'm stitching two over one on 16 count black Ada using called four delicious DMC. Um, and this one, I'll talk more about my plans later, but this was the winner against Shores of Hawk Run Hollow in my um, sampler March Madness bracket. So you'll be seeing more of this in my next video if you join me. <laughs> Next up is Spring in England. I'm very excited about this because I designed it. <laughs> um, so I'm always going to be a stitcher who mostly stitches work of other designers just because I love them so much. But I, I started designing myself in 2021 
uh, inspired by the the floss two videos of Annie the proper stitcher and I I haven't put out much in the last couple of years I went through a bit of a dry spell um, and so this one I just I find it really really fun when I feel motivated like I've got an idea that's come to me and I just I just feel like I have to do it and I love it so much and so uh, this was one of those moments I have a whole massive series in mind do I know exactly what's going to be in all of them no I don't um but that's part of the fun so this is um the quintessential English spring as you can see it is a work in progress um, so this is a like a candy coloured house, <laughs> um, which I really love. So it's got a little bit to go in the roof, but it's mostly done. Uh, these are forget me nots, which remind me of my late great grandmother and which bloom in England in spring. Uh, this is a nightingale, and you can see from the um, from the musical notes, we've got a lovely little nightingale chorus going on here. Um, these are apple blossoms and there's a little wee flag in the urn. This is a badger cub specifically. So badger cubs come out of their dens in spring and start foraging around for food. And this little wee badger cub, I've added some millhill beads for his eyes. Um, I just think he's super cute and I maybe I shouldn't say that because I designed him but I I feel like if I didn't love him then it wouldn't be right to put him out into the world <laughs> so kind of okay with that um, and as, as you can see he's chilling out in a bluebell carpet um, bluebells carpet the woods in some places in England it's something that's absolutely on my bucket list to experience one day and also my grandma was a huge um, spring bulb grower and I've inherited some bluebells from her garden which I love so that makes this kind of personal as well uh, while also being very much just a like a classic English spring piece. Um, so here we have this is a cuckoo egg and these are uh, reed warbler eggs in a reed warbler's nest. So reed warblers are one of the species that cuckoos parasitize. Is that a word? <laughs> um, cuckoos lay their eggs in reed warbler nests and so these these poor eggs have a, a difficult fate ahead of them if that cuckoo egg hatches, but who knows, maybe it won't. Um, I have some pink uh, forget-me-nots here to balance out the pink here to give us a nice colour balance throughout this piece. Um, and then this is going to be a European robin. So I've just got the red breast to go. And then at the bottom of the chart, there's an optional band um, of words which say what the things are that are in it. And I designed the script to be kind of similar to Ogham script, um, just for that little touch to um, you know, the historical roots of the country. And um, I'm going to add it to mine and I'm super, super, super excited. So um, I hope you enjoy seeing this. I've stitched it on 28 count mushroom legana, but there's so many different fabrics that would, would work well with it. And you'll notice I've used Calico, which is one of the more inexpensive fabrics around the edge. So I've just cut my piece to be the size that I need to finish it. I didn't want to use a lot of fabric because embroidery fabric is really expensive. I didn't want to use a lot of fabric to have enough to hold in my Q-snap. So I've just used this inexpensive calico, which I've had for about 10, 15 years, um, sewed it on and I'm holding it perfectly in here. It also means I don't need a grime guard because I'm not actually holding my hand on my fabric at any point. And then at the end, I'll just use a seam ripper to carefully remove these stitches. Um, and I will reuse the calico on my next piece. So that is spring in England. Uh, next up, Summer House Stitch Works Winter Cometh. Uh, so I'll put up here how it will look when it is finished. 
and before you saw this in my last video so this is a design which i absolutely love as part of a seasonal series and i finished autumn provides late last year so now i'm stitching winter and you'll see i've made a lot of progress since the last time um, I'm stitching this on 18 count opalescent Ada in hand, one over one using the cold full floss, and I absolutely love it. Now I have retarded the words. This isn't th. <laughs> um, it's meant to say winter cometh, and I love the word cometh. Um, but to me, whenever I see it, I think of Game of Thrones, and I just. I didn't want that to be the thing that I thought of when I saw this in my home, so I've eventually decided that I would change that last word. Um, and so I'll be sharing what that is as I stitch it, but here's a here's a bit of a close up. I, I think this is a really, really, really fun piece. Sorry about the lighting, we've got an overcast day here today, but also I have green mesh on the windows. It means I can have my windows open at night and the mozzies don't come in, um, but it gives a faint tint to my photos when I take them inside during the day, and I guess in this case, possibly to my video too. Apologies if that is the case. Uh, next up is Jangle from the Snowbell series by Mill Hill. So, so this was another new start last month for my winter theme. Um, this part of the bell at the bottom is completely done, except you'll notice there's some spaces where uh, it's waiting for beads, but otherwise it's finished. Um, I'm using the kit floss and 14 count plastic canvas, which I love stitching on for my Mill Hill ornaments um, as a perforated paper substitute. Uh, next up, we've got two prairie schoolers this one is prairie seasons summer um this is a gift for my mom i stitched her two of them last year and i've just got a wee little style i'm stitching this in hand as well which i adore stitching in hand it's just so much fun i don't have to sit at a floor stand i can just curl up in a little corner in the couch or the armchair or my bed wherever i am um, and it's so portable and fun. Um, this is 14 count coffee tea dyed Ada. Um, I use the Priscilla and Chelsea method and I'm using the called for delicious DMC. Um, you'll see from the before that I had only a teeny weeny weeny little start on this. Um, so I'm really happy that you can see a bit more of the design coming in now. Another Prairie Schooler. This is the 11th day of Christmas from the 12 Days of Christmas series. Um, it's another new start. I have stitching him on 32 count light blue Lugana and I'm using my own conversion of Delicious DMC to be jewel tones. Um, I did that because I started stitching this series when my sons were very young and they really liked bright colours. Uh, and I wasn't as much into the prim aesthetic as I am now. <laughs> but I still think they're really lovely and so I'll just display them all together um, as a set and maybe put something vintage near them so it, it ties them in with my other more prim uh, items in my decor. And my final whip to share with you uh, is another Mill Hill. This is Cozy Christmas Santa, which was designed for Mill Hill by Jim Shaw. This was a gift for me from a dear friend, which was so incredibly generous and kind of her. Um, I stitched most of this yesterday, actually, um, as part of March Madness, which I'll talk more about soon. And I've actually finished his skirt. Can you believe it? There are so many holes in there, and this will be full coverage when it's done. Um, but every single cross stitch is done. So all of those enormous number of stitches are beads. <laughs> it's going to take a long time because most of them are petite beads, so they will require a full cross. But, you know, it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. I'll love it. <laughs> and it will look fantastic when it's done. Um, finishes. I have one to share with you. This is uh, Little House Needleworks Snowy Pines. Um, I'll put up a before picture here. So this was one that was a new start in my last video and I had, had an absolute blast stitching him. I adore bears. Uh, this has been on my list of things I wanted to stitch and own for a really long time but I just 
I have a lot of really huge pieces and I've been really focused on achieving them. And so I just, I haven't allowed myself to start so many of those things. Um, and so this time I just decided, no, nope, I'm doing it. <laughs> and I, I absolutely loved every stitch. Um, you'll notice this is a really small margin. Um, I'm going to finish it as a little pillow, uh, which I'll put up in a, a dough bowl, probably in um, the library I plan to build. I don't have one yet. <laughs> um, I'm currently filming in my stitching room, um, which is quite a small room, and it has four bookcases in it, and they are full. <laughs> and I have a lot more books in storage. Um, I own well over 600 books, and so um, in my own home, I eventually want to build, um, you know, floor to ceiling multiple bookcases to to make my own little library. And so I'm looking ahead to what kind of um, decor I want to be in there. I want to stitch a lot of literature themed pieces and I want um, little seasonal smalls that I can decorate with as well. So this is the start of that journey. Next up, Stitchy Plan. So March Madness. If you haven't heard about it before, um, go check out Steel City Stitches on uh, Floss Tube. It is their brainchild and they talk all about it there. It's so much fun. So essentially, you um, select eight projects and you have them in pairs uh, and you stitch two of them and then you put them to a vote which one will proceed into the next category and the people who wish to participate um, and there's no criteria for participating it's just if you want to um, go on to someone's Instagram stories and vote on which one you would like to make it through to the next round and um, I'm doing it for the first time this year and I'm super 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 excited about it so my first um, category was samplers um, so that was the two that I've already shared with you and winter comes one uh, my next was Santa's and voting's open right now it's between these two and the last time I looked I think it was uh, 19 votes and 21 votes so who knows <laughs> who will win I have absolutely no idea um, and then my next two sets of categories I have Spring, and I have smalls and for the smalls I'm going to be working on more things like this that I haven't started yet that I wanted to start literally forever and I'm just I am so excited for that um also spring um I have picked my new starts for that category I'm going to do the spring um uh, piece in this Summer House Stitch Works series, um, which is not like me at all. I usually finish one in a series before I move to the next one, but I, it's just calling to me. Uh, as you might know if you've been around here for a while, I live in perpetual summer, <laughs> really close to the equator. I'm going on a vacation later this month to somewhere that will be in spring, and so I want a piece of really portable plain stitching that I can take, and so that will be a great fit for that trip. The other one that I'm doing is Spring in Wales, which is the next up in this series. I'm super excited about it. I released it yesterday. It's my 10th release since I started designing in 2021. So that feels like a bit of a milestone. What it features, we have a, a farmhouse, um, which has a round Flemish uh, chimney, um, which was a feature of um, farmhouses and not all of them but a lot of farmhouses in Wales in the 16th and 17th century and the farmhouse has candles in all of the windows for the Welsh festival which in English is Candlemas I'm not going to try and pronounce it part of there's a party bus coming past. I don't know if you heard that or not. Sorry if you did. <laughs> I'm not going to try and pronounce the Welsh because I would butcher it and I don't want to do that to such a beautiful, beautiful language. Um, but one of the things that was done in this ancient festival, which goes back to the 11th century, uh, was people would take candles to be blessed in the church and then they would 
place them in their windows at night. Um, and this festival marked the beginning of spring. So uh, it was important to me to include that. Then we have, I think it's pronounced Gwaniad. Apologies if that's wrong. Um, this is a freshwater fish which is critically endangered and is native to Wales and only occurs in Wales, literally in two bodies of water. It was only one, but the population was declining due to predation of an introduced species and due to um, the water quality issues. So a second population has been set up, but they're still doing really poorly. So it was important to me to include them. Uh, then we have an otter. Otter cubs are born in spring. Otters are native to Wales and they now occur in every county of the country. And I really want in, in all of these pieces, I didn't think about it as much in the winter one, um, but I will moving forward. I wanted to include the range of different ecosystems in Wales. Um, and so the, we've got freshwater um, rivers and lakes um, and then I guess farmland with the farmhouse there and then we get to wild garlic in Wales according to my research I haven't actually been there before but my goodness it's on my bucket list I really want to go and now I desperately want to go in spring and um, so in woodland in Wales in spring the wild garlic blooms and um According to my research, it fills the entire glade with scent and it's just absolutely beautiful and people look forward to going and, and looking at it and I thought that's just, that's so iconic. It just had to be in here. Um, and then we have the the wood warbler, uh, which is one of the most common um, birds that breed in spring in Welsh woodlands. It was a little bit difficult to decide what bird to include because so many of the species that live in Wales are highly migratory and I wanted ones that were authentic to to the place and to Wales specifically um, but this is one of the most common um, woodland birds in Wales so that's why I selected it for this piece and they have a beautiful call you can go on Google and you can listen to it it's, it's so lovely um, then we have daffodils. Daffodil is the national flower of Wales, which is super fun. Um, and then finally we have the red grouse, which is from uh, Welsh moorlands. And it has a really beautiful speckled egg, which they vary from being so red because the mottling so dense to being very 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 pale and everything in between so um, I included the red grouse to encapsulate that ecosystem um, and because I love birds uh, and I thought it would be so fun to design it because it has such an interesting pattern in its feathers and these great big huge chunky white legs with black talons and yeah so that's why that's why I added her I hope you like it I'll be doing some travel stitching um and I'll be doing more March Madness um in March I don't know when my next video will come out it will probably be late March before I head away haul oh, my last few videos I had no haul to show <laughs> this one I do which I'm super excited about I've made a couple of purchases um so this is 36 count oh. agave Edinburgh linens I prefer even weave to linen because I just I I like the the lack of slubs basically and this is so fine I don't know how I'm going to stitch on it <laughs> but even though I have never stitched 36 count before um I just had to buy it because this color is to die for and I wish I could stitch them together look at this it's just yeah so stoked with that um this is 32 count anthracite lugana um again just a small piece but look at that color stunning and I have 32 count antique white jobelin and I've bought this to go with this kit Welcome Friends by Joan Elliott um, I 
I am an Ada Stitcher, as you have seen. Almost every single thing you have seen <laughs> today has been on Ada. And I love Ada because it's so fast, so easy. It's so much cheaper. Um, and when you're looking at it across the room, I feel like the effect is just as good. Um, but there are some things that I would just prefer to stitch on and even weave or linen and that's generally when there's a large amount of background that will be visible afterwards now the this one here you can see a lot of background and so I stitched it on Lugana on my winter comes there's going to be an enormous amount of background visible um, but I'm stitching this on Ada because it's black and I didn't want to stitch on black 32 count. I felt like that would be a little bit harsh on my eyes. And one of my key priorities in stitching is to be able to stitch for my whole life. And so I don't ever want to do anything that gives me eye strain at all. Because uh, while the piece might be stunning, it's not sustainable over the next, you know, hopefully another five decades of stitching. Um, so that's why I made that decision um, but for this one here there's so much white and you can see even when it's printed up really small compared to how big it will be you can really see the gaps in the fabric um, so I decided that for this one I wanted to stitch it on an even wave I'm really happy with that um, fabric that came to me this is the please excuse the galere this is the the threads and looking at them in person I really like them but they're not quite as much my colors as I thought they would be so I might mix it up a little bit um, but this design I just I love it so much um, this is Irish um, and I really want it to go in the library that doesn't exist yet <laughs> which I just described to you as like the centerpiece of my wall that's full of stitching and um, I collect a lot of art um, and I take a lot of pictures when I travel so I want it to be a mixture of all of those things but with this as the, the middle piece so I don't know when I'm going to start stitching it I would like it to be right away but I'm going to do this on my floor stand so I can stitch two-handed and so I just need to wait for it to become available because I only have one I only have one set of hands so that's perfectly fine um, and then the last new purchase is this fine line disappearing ink pen uh, handwork maniac recently talked in one of her videos about how she uses a disappearing ink pen to mark grids on her very very large full coverage pieces um, to help with stitching them and I'm working on quite a number now that are not on gridded fabric and so I messaged her and I asked if she could give me the exact recommendation of which one she uses because my worst scenario would be to to use one and then it doesn't actually disappear so I'd rather use one that's tried and tested by someone whose work I really respect and this is the one that she recommended to me so I'm super excited to have it a couple of little little extras uh, so the first is the reading though. I am an avid reader. I have read 29 books this year already and I think it's what the 10th of March. That's pretty ridiculous um, even by my standards and a lot of them like this are, are thick chunky books. Um, I think my longest one was 964 pages but there have been a lot that are around the 700 page mark and that has definitely had an impact on my stitching time <laughs> but I've just been loving it and I set myself a goal of because I've separated I've separated my books so I have a bookcase that's full of books that I have read and the other three are books that I have not yet read um, and I set myself a goal of in my bookcase of books I have read to have an entire shelf of books that have pink and red spines I do organize my books by spine color um, but I know them so well that I can still find them instantly um, I don't need to be looking them up by author to be able to do that so I'm very comfortable with that decision and I, I love the aesthetic as well I'm 
two books away from achieving that goal. Um, and I will say full disp- disclosure, this bookcase is four shelves. The first one is reference books like cookbooks, gardening books, that sort of thing. Um, so only three of the four shelves I'm filling and it's not quite filled yet. I created space by stacking some of them on top of one of my bookcases. Anyway, enough about that. This is five star easily I read it in just a few days because I I struggled to put it down Um, it is about Celtic Scotland Wales and England it's about um, people who lived in that time including Katamandua who was the Queen of the North and it tells the story of her life as historical fiction in great detail it also tells the story of the lives of um, two Scottish historians and one English playwright and how they intersect uh, despite 2,000 years separating them and it was just absolutely fascinating I didn't know what was going to come next and I would highly recommend this book um, to anyone I really hope um, if you decide to check it out, that you would enjoy it. Um, Multi-crafting corner. So I put this section in to encourage me to not just stitch, but to focus on my other crafts as well. Last time I shared with you this, I can't get it all in a frame, uh, this throw blanket that I'm doing, and I had done maybe this much of the white, and now I've added a whole extra ball of white, which is super exciting. Um, really, really happy with it. I want to sew some like project folders. I don't have anything like that. It would be really fun to have a couple for my upcoming trip, so maybe I'll have some of them to share with you next episode. We'll see. See where we go. Um, Cross Stitch Academy is something I've shared in all my videos to date. I'm not going to do that today because I've decided it might be easier to have them separate so they're an easy reference video you can go back to if, if you're interested in doing that without needing to like scroll back through stuff you've already watched. So I'm hoping to um, film one in the next couple of weeks depending on how busy work and travel planning keeps me. I'll let you know how I go. And it looks like we're getting close to a 1000 follower giveaway. So if you enjoyed this video and haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Finally, um, as mentioned in my last video, I really love how Jane closes out her and Julie's floss tube videos, running with scissors, with her own words of wisdom and decided to close mine with a section of words I read in the last month that inspired me. And uh, this episode, our words of wisdom are from the inestimable Meryl Streep and Vincent Van Gogh. Now that's an unlikely combination. <laughs> If ever I heard one. Um, But I really loved what they had to say. So the quote I read from Meryl is, What makes you different or weird, that's your strength. And from Vincent van Gogh, Normality is a paved road. It's comfortable to walk, but no flowers grow. Gakatiano. Until next time, take care of yourselves and happy stitching, friends.